Hey guys, how's it going? It's Rafi with Case Suspension again, and today we are going to be doing a tune-up on this girl. So this here is a 2013 Jeep Wrangler Sahara. It has a 3.6 liter engine in there. Uh, we're going to show you guys how to replace the spark plugs, and uh, we're also going to be upgrading the coil packs at the same time with the RIP Superchargers uh, Performance Coil Packs. So hopefully we get a little more juice out of this girl, and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do after you pop the hood is go ahead and disconnect your negative battery terminal. Uh, that way, you know, we're not arcing anything out by accident, causing any electrical issues, that sort of thing. Um, also, we're going to take this off and then we can go ahead and take out the air box. Uh, if you still have factory wiring, your uh, battery terminal should be held on by just a little 10 millimeter nut. You loosen that up. tight there you go should be able to wiggle right off set that down that way it doesn't touch anything and you're good to go uh, so we're gonna go ahead and remove the air box now so your air box is held in on top of the radiator shroud by these two 10 millimeter bolts uh, then you have your hose clamps uh, size 8 or 5 16 ought to get those loose um, when you do go to pull this though, uh, be careful there is a intake air temperature sensor underneath that you will have to unplug. So we're going to go ahead and take this guy off. Ten. Get everything loose and unclipped. Should be able to slide this right on up. There's this breather hose. So once you get it lifted up, you're going to see this sensor just right here plugged in. You go ahead and just disconnect that, and you can set this out of the way. So now we're getting to the more critical points here. So in order to change the spark plugs or the coil packs, um, obviously it's a V6. So we have three on the passenger side and three on the driver side. Uh, the driver side though is underneath this uh, upper intake manifold. So we're gonna have to remove this. Uh, in order to do that, uh, there is a series of eight millimeter bolts that we're gonna loosen up. Uh, there is a bracket underneath the throttle body uh, there's a bracket on the back of the intake manifold on the driver's side and there's also a bracket right here that holds our uh, heater lines uh, it's got an electrical plug on it but we're gonna have to loosen all these up uh, move them out of the way that way we can get to the uh, manifold uh, now please take care when you are removing this uh, these hard lines here these are your you know breather lines evap lines uh, if you're not careful they will break and if they break, you are going to have fun replacing these. Um, so one thing I would recommend is if you have a heat gun, uh, go ahead and heat up these joints right here. Uh, that way the rubber gets a little bit softer, a little more pliable, and just slowly work it out and pull them off. You have two on the top here, and there is one on the back side of the throttle body. Uh, that's a little bit more difficult to take off without breaking, but it is possible. So please take your time and uh, just be careful there. So we're going to go ahead and zip these guys off. So on the passenger side here, uh, here's our heater lines. Uh, there's this plug here. There are two 10 millimeter bolts right above this uh, Molex plug here. Um, and then there are a couple bolts here as well to remove the bracket that holds down these heater lines. And that should give us enough room to move this bracket up enough to get this manifold off. Uh, it is also held on by two 10 millimeter nuts on the bottom here, but they are a little bit harder to access without you know, going from underneath or removing the battery tray. So. We're just going to remove these and kind of just bend it up. And 
And you don't have to worry about losing these bolts. They'll stay inside the manifold once you let them loose. So they should just stay right there. You don't have to take them all the way out. I'm going to go ahead and remove this little shield here. Once that's gone, we can go ahead and access the bolt that's in the back here underneath the firewall. Uh, an extension with a wobbly really does help. Uh, you do not have to remove these bolts here for the hold down on the engine cover. So don't worry about that. Uh, and then we'll uh, get to the driver's side after we loosen up that nut and show you what to do there. So we got all those bolts out. Uh, now we are on the driver's side. Uh, so a few things to consider here. We got uh, some electrical connectors here. Uh, we have the throttle body connection here. Uh, and then there's uh, this bracket right here underneath the throttle body. Uh, there are two 10 millimeter nuts right up here that'll hold it. And then there are also two more underneath the throttle body that we'll remove. And this bracket will come out. Uh, that bracket needs to come off in order to remove the intake manifold. And then there are two 10 millimeter bolt, uh, nuts right over here that we'll have to also remove so that this bracket can be pulled back. Uh, if you want to remove it entirely, there are two more nuts on the bottom, but not necessary. You can just remove these, pull this thing back, that way the intake manifold can come up. Uh, also, uh, referring to the vacuum line I was talking about earlier, it's going to be this one right here. So this one is... Uh, it's usually really stuck on there, so just be careful pulling it off. Again, heat gun, uh, screwdriver pick, something, just work it nice and slowly and pull it straight out. So let's get this all disconnected. All right, so once you get those two bolts out, this bracket should come off. There's some loom on here, we're just going to have to pop off, so we'll just disconnect these real quick. There we go. Set this guy off to the side. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and disconnect the throttle body connection here. There's a small little red locking tab. There we go. Set this loom off to the side. And let's go ahead and take care of that uh, line there as well as the other bracket. Alright, so I moved the camera here so you can get a better angle at this hose. So the vacuum line I'm talking about is located right here. Uh, it's just behind the throttle body. Uh, again, just be careful with it. Uh, take it off nice and easy and uh, hopefully nothing breaks. Alright, so now that we got all the vacuum lines off, we got the brackets off, this one's disconnected. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bolts disconnected. This should be loose, so you can already feel it moving. Uh, I'm just going to pull this bracket backwards, just kind of bend it out of the way. Alright, had that wire loom holding me up there, should be free now. this guy off. 
So now that we're at this point, uh, everything should be pretty much accessible. Uh, we're going to take off this dust shield right here in order to access these three coil packs. So you just push on these little tabs up top and pull, and it will disconnect. Once you get everything disconnected, there are 10 millimeter uh, bolts holding in the coil pack. And then pull straight up. There you go. Uh, and then use your spark plug socket. Go ahead and uh, take out the spark plugs, change them out, and uh, assembly is in reverse, but we'll go over all that too. We're going to be moving some stuff around. I'm going to blow all this off. There's some leaves and dirt and debris here, so I just I don't want to have anything fall into the intake here. So the spark plugs we're going to be using are what the Jeep calls for, and they are the Champion Iridiums. Uh, so these ones are going to be part number 9407. Uh, you can get them at your local auto parts store, Rock Auto, anything of that sort. Uh, you want to go ahead and grab your feeler gauges, go ahead and gap these to 043 per manufacturer spec, and uh, you know lube up the threads with a little bit of air tool oil, and we'll go ahead and change them out. There you have it. First plug's out. Let's uh, go ahead and change them all. All right, so we got all the spark plugs changed, and now we're gonna go ahead and install our new coil packs. These are from RIP Superchargers or RIP Mods. Uh, they are a performance coil pack. Uh, they do come with six coils and new boots to fit. So uh, the only sad part about all this is that three of them are gonna be covered. They're so pretty. So let's get these guys on. Okay, well, we have officially completed the spark plug change and coil pack change. Um, again, you do not have to change coil packs. We wanted to go with the performance coil pack, so that's why we did that. Uh, you can keep your OEM ones. Um, although, if you're doing this job and you're over 100,000 miles, I would recommend replacing at least these coil packs. Um, because if one of them tends to go bad, you know, right after you swap it, well, then you got to take the whole thing apart again. So, I would recommend at least some three new coil packs on this side if you can't afford to do all of them but at least if those ones go bad it's a lot easier to access uh, we've done these in the past to where right after we did the spark plugs one of these coil packs went out so I mean you can take that with a grain of salt but that's what we recommend uh, so at this point we're gonna go ahead and just go in reverse order put the dust caps back on put the intake back on uh, brackets back on screw everything back together and then fire her up Let's do this.
All right, the final step is to go ahead and reconnect the battery and then we'll fire this baby up. Well, folks, there you have it. That is how you change the spark plugs on these Wrangler 3.6 liter Penstar motors. Uh, the concept is the same for most all Chrysler vehicles that have the 3.6 liter. Uh, the earlier model 3.8 liter is relatively the same. Uh, those are a little bit easier to access though, uh, since everything is on the side. But uh, the general concept should get you to where you need to be. Uh, if you have not checked out RIP Superchargers website yet, please check them out, uh, ripmods.com. Uh, they have some awesome stuff for your Jeep, uh, your Ford, I mean, they Dodge, I'm pretty sure they cover almost every make out there. And uh, I know that they're adding more to their lineup as well. So excellent stuff. And I guess time will tell on this vehicle as far as how uh, performance goes, mileage goes, uh, power increases, all that jazz. So uh, we'll report back with that as time moves forward. Uh, but in any case, uh, it is December 19th. It's almost Christmas, so uh, we want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Uh, we're hoping that 2021 is <laughs> much, much better than 2020 was. Um, I mean, the, the bar was set pretty low here, so we're hoping that uh, it gets a little bit uh, better for all of us as a society. Um, but in any cases, uh, stay safe out there. Keep the rubber side down, and as always, happy trails.